y'all? It's Joe from Petty Fixes back again, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for you. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to build your very own gaming beast for roughly around $800 on a budget. Okay, so in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include every single part that I have used in my personal build. And while you can't go cheaper in some cases, this is the thing that worked for me personally. I decided to make this video because people always come to me asking me how to build a computer. They want them for different things that they're going to be using in their daily lives. Something for schoolwork, something for gaming, something for rendering. I get these questions all the time, so I decided why not make a video about it. I already have something sitting on my desk right now that's pretty powerful to do anything I want to do, especially gaming and rendering. So, with that said, let's go ahead and get down to the part list. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to tell you is that eBay and Craigslist are your best friends in the case of this deal. Don't be put off by that. I understand that you may want new parts and everything, but this is a budget deal. So the thing about a budget build is you got to get in where you fit in. You got to get the cheapest parts you can that are going to maximize your efficiency and your power in your build. Okay, so the first thing that you want to choose out is your processor. It literally is the heart of your machine. For me, I didn't need a super expensive processor, but I wanted something with some very good performance to price ratio. So what I went with was the Intel Xeon E5 2670 version 1 processor. Now, when I found out about this processor, I found out that it was only 50 something dollars on eBay, roughly around $60 on eBay. I found out from another YouTuber, I can't remember his name, but I'll be sure to link him down in the description so you can check out his channel. But I found it for $50 on eBay when I first found out about this chip. I pretty much saw how powerful and cheap it was for the performance and the price. This fits an LGA 2011 motherboard, a version 1 motherboard. For me, I needed a nice chip that would be a good rendering chip. And this processor, compared to my previous build, it, it just does the trick. It's an 8 core, 16 thread beast, clocked in at 2.6 gigahertz. And it might seem a little underwhelming, but it turbos up to 3.3 gigahertz, which is pretty respectable. Now they go for roughly around $100. Next is the motherboard. For me, I know that I have to pick out a motherboard that matched the socket on the chip. So what I went with was the ASUS Rampage 4 Gene. It was 150 bucks. It's a Micro ATX X79 motherboard. Now, it is a little older. It's a little older chipset compared to the newer X99 chipset, but it's still a pretty powerful chipset nonetheless. It has space for quad-channel RAM, like the majority of the motherboards based on the chipset does, but it comes with less PCI slots for expandability, which is a trade-off of one Micro ATX. X79 motherboards, eBay has them all day for 150 plus, but because that processor is so cheap, most would cost upwards of $200 because of how cheap that processor is. They just want to jack the price up on the motherboard. I don't know why they do it, but hey, it is what it is. A quick search on eBay will show you many of those motherboards. Next up is the RAM. Now, you have to be careful when choosing RAM because your motherboard may or may not support the RAM and the speed of the RAM. I chose 8 gigs of DDR3 1866MHz RAM from PNY. It's two 4 gig sticks, so I can do dual channel RAM. At 60 bucks, you can find cheaper RAM maybe, but I went with some that was a little bit more performance. I actually bought this RAM at Best Buy when they had it, but they don't have this RAM anymore, so Amazon has it at this link in the description. Okay, now here's where things may get a little dicey or pricey for you. It depends on what route you want to go. I went with the air cooler route. The CPU cooler I chose was the Cooler Master Master Air Maker 8. This cost $115. Now, like I said, it can get a little pricey, but you can get CPU coolers as cheap as about 30 bucks that are going to be sufficient for what you want to do with this build. This is one of the best air coolers you can buy today on the market. It's made with 3D vapor chamber technology, which gives much better cooling compared to other air coolers, and it even outperforms some of the closed loop water cooling systems like the Corsair H100Is and things like that. This also comes with two interchangeable top covers. One is translucent, and it shows off the LEDs that are on the top of the cooler. Or you can go for an aluminum plate, which has a nice clean finish, which is the one that I use. The cooler can also accommodate up to 220mm fans or 140mm fans for maximum cooling. It comes with 240mm fans, but I personally went with two 120s. Two 120 take ring LED fans, but more on those fans later. Okay, so if the processor is the backbone, the heart of your system for rendering, then your graphics card is obviously going to be the backbone, the heart of your system for gaming. 
I chose this particular one because it's actually a really, really good deal. It's a really good performance to price ratio graphics card. I went with the XFX RX 480 8GB graphics card. I snagged this graphics card from Best Buy for $289. It's a pretty powerful card for the money. I got a few unique features that I want to talk about though before we move on. First is the LED lights all over this thing. It's a beautiful card. Not only do you have an illuminated XFX logo on the side of the card that faces you, but you also have illuminated LED fans. But that's not the cool thing about these fans. The fans are removable and replaceable. So you can choose any color that you can think of. Blue for those who like blue builds. Those who want a red, the ever popular red build. Hey, you can theme your fans to match your build. The big bonus here is that this car is VR ready. It's virtual reality ready. So whenever you decide to go that route with an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive, this car will handle it. So to power everything, you're going to need a power supply. This power supply is an A plus bronze module power system, the Corsair CX750M power supply. It's perfect for this build considering this isn't a very power hungry build, but it's more than enough to get the job done. It comes with a normal assortment of cables to get you started, but you can opt for more custom cable sleeves just to make your build stand out that much more. Now you're going to need a case to put everything in. I chose the Corsair Air 540 Carbide Mid Tower Case. At $120, I chose this case for the simple fact that it was a very spacious case and had a large side window. I want to be able to showcase my build. I want everybody to see what I got inside of my case. The case is pretty versatile also, and I've had this case before in a previous build, so it was kind of an easy choice for me. It's got two 3.5 inch hard drive caddies in the bottom of the case where the window is. It's got room for two 140mm fans or three 120s in the front, two 140s or two 120s at the top. You can fit a single 120 or 140 millimeter at the back for exhaust. It's got eight PCI slots, which is a lot for a motherboard PCI slot expandability. Around to the other side of the case, there's plenty of room for cable management, which makes this case a breeze to work with. It's also got a caddy which holds four SSDs. This case is very flexible and it's large enough to house everything that I picked out in this build. Now, of course, you're going to need storage also. So for the hard drives, I went with a WD Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard drive. That was $50. And for my OS storage, I went with the SanDisk 128 gigabyte solid state drive, and that was $45. Now in the case of my build, I had a little bit of extra to spend. So what I did was I did some aesthetic things. I went with some custom sleeve cables from Silverstone, and I'm gonna link those in the description. So I also went with different fans. The fans I ended up choosing were the Thermaltake Ring 120mm LED fans and I chose these fans purely for aesthetic reasons. They do the job of cooling too. They have an LED ring around the whole entire fan so they give a pretty cool light up effect. I went with the RGB version of those so I got three of those in the front of my case. I have one on each side of my Cooler Master CPU cooler and I have one 120mm at the back of my case for exhaust. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's put everything together to see how it all comes together for the ultimate gaming and rendering machine. On a budget that is, I forgot to include that part.
if you guys should like and subscribe and leave a comment below on my feedback on how everything sounds and looks in this video. I greatly appreciate it.